Come on, people now. Smile on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love one another right now. Like the kid activists do. Yes, they take care of people. It's amazing. How's it going, Miss Jan? Oh, I'm learning so much through this collection of Dude. kid activists. Yeah, there's so many people. Yeah. Like, I never... Remember last week, I guess, we did Emma Watson. Right, and yeah. I, and then I put up the wrong one. Remember, I put I up uh, Nelson Mandela, that. but I put it. I, I, I fixed it. I fixed it the That's next good. day, so That's everybody's good. seen the real one now. Yeah. Um, but weren't we all amazed that she's not just an actress? No, I know yeah. it was wild. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah, so we learned so much through reading. I know. About yeah, people. I'm yeah. glad we we're yeah. lucky to have these resources. We we're lucky to have you, and we are lucky to learn about. Helen Keller. Helen Keller, yeah. yes. And the mystery of language. Mm -hmm. Helen Keller is best known as an activist for the rights of people with disabilities, but she was also a radical socialist who advocated for many oppressed groups. Before she could become such a strong force for social justice, she needed to acquire language. No easy task for a deaf and blind child at a time when people with disabilities had little access to education. Helen was born on June 27, 1880 in Tuscumbia, a small town in Alabama. She was a bright and confident toddler, but at only 19 months old, she became very sick. The doctors thought she would die. Fortunately, Helen survived but the illness left her unable to see or hear. I can't imagine. I can't imagine yeah. either. Yeah. yeah. Helen spent a lot of time on her mother's lap or holding on to her skirt while she followed her around. She used gestures to make her wishes known, though she knew that other people moved their mouths to communicate. She would sometimes stand between two adults, touching their lips. But when she tried moving her own lips, no one understood. When Helen was five, her sister Mildred was born. Helen did not appreciate this new baby at all. Now Mildred sat on her mother's lap and took up a lot of her mother's time and attention. As a child, Helen liked to play with a little girl named Martha Washington, who is the daughter of the family's cook. That's Martha. Martha was two or three years older, and she understood Helen's signs and gestures. Helen could be very bossy. She knew what she wanted, and she was prepared to fight for it, so she usually got her way. That's <laughs> funny, isn't it? I don't know yeah. what they're fighting yeah. for, but oh, what <laughs> they're tugging yeah. on each other. The two girls spent a lot of time in the kitchen. They helped make ice cream, ground coffee beans, kneaded balls of dough, and fed the hens and turkeys that gathered around the kitchen steps. One time, a turkey stole a tomato from Helen's hand and ran off with it. That gave Helen and Martha an idea. The girls took a freshly iced cake from the kitchen, carried it to the wood pile, and ate the whole thing. Oh my. I guess they figured, you know, if a critter could get away with it, then yeah, they I mean, could. Yeah. yeah. Afterward, Helen was very sick. Yeah. Have you ever had that sensation where you ate too much and it just sat there and oh, yes. it didn't feel good. Oh yes, quite yeah. often. Yeah. Helen had fun with Martha, but she still had no language to communicate with. She often had angry outbursts and broke down in tears, frustrated and exhausted from trying to express herself. When she was six, her, her parents took her to Washington, D.C. to see Alexander Graham Bell, the man who invented the telephone. He said that Helen could be educated, and he told them how to find a teacher. Helen later described her teacher's arrival as the most important day of her life. Anne Sullivan was 20 years old, and she was determined to help Helen communicate. On their first morning together, Anne gave Helen a doll. Taking Helen's hand, she used the manual alphabet to fingerspell D-O-L-L -L into it. Curious about this new game, Helen spelled D-O-L-L -L back to her teacher. She was very pleased with herself and ran downstairs to show her mother her new signs. She was on her way to learning language, but she did not yet understand that this combination of signs meant doll, 
or that there was a word to go with every object. Helen was sometimes annoyed by her new teacher's interference. She is very quick-tempered and willful, Anne wrote in a letter soon after her arrival. But Anne was patient, persistent, and firm. Over and over, she spelled the names of everyday objects into Helen's hand. Helen quickly learned to spell the words back, but she was just imitating her teacher. A month after Anne's arrival, they had a breakthrough. Helen was holding her mug under the water spout while Anne pumped water to fill it. See, this is how they used to get water back oh, in the day. Yeah. Right? There was a tower and a lever, and you pump and pump and pump until water draws up through the middle and then out through the spout. From a well? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I had a breakthrough. Helen was holding her mug under the water spout. Anne was pumping the water to fill it. As the water, the cold water rushed over Helen's hand, Anne spelled water to her in Ellen's free hand. Helen later described the moment in her memoir. Somehow the mystery of language was revealed to me. I knew then that W-A-T-E-R meant the wonderful, cool something that was flowing over my hand. That living word awakened my soul, gave it light, hope, joy, set it free. There were barriers still, it is true, but the barriers that could be in time swept away. Wow. Helen needed more than individual words, however. She needed to be exposed to language in the way most children are, by being surrounded by it. So her teacher signed into her hands from morning till night, using full sentences, new words, unfamiliar expressions. Helen learned rapidly. She even tried to teach her new signs to her dog, Belle, by grabbing her paws and moving her toes. That's so cool! Isn't that neat? She was brilliant. Yeah, was man. <clears throat> Helen worked so hard that her parents and Anne became worried. She fingerspelled constantly, not even wanting to stop to eat. They took her to a doctor who, had di who diagnosed her with an overactive mind. Mm. Anne tried to encourage Helen to slow down but Helen was unstoppable. She began learning to read and write. She knew that Anne wrote letters in Braille to the other blind children, and she began learning to write letters by herself. One day, baby Mildred managed to grab one of Helen's letters. Helen pulled the soggy paper from her sister's mouth and gave Mildred a smack. Anne swooped in and picked up the crying baby. Wrong girl did eat letter, Helen told her, fingerspelling the words. Helen did slap very wrong girl. She said that she had told Mildred no, no, no many times. Anne explained that Mildred did not understand Helen's signs and that she needed to be gentle with the baby. Helen ran upstairs, and when she returned, she had a letter written in Braille. She gave it to, Bill, to Mildred. Baby not think, she told her. Helen will give baby pretty letter. Baby can eat all the words. It was the beginning. Oh. Isn't that cool? It was the beginning of what eventually became a close relationship between the two sisters. See, that is the yeah. sweetest thing. Yeah. When Helen was almost eight, she was invited to tour the Perkins Institute for the Blind in Boston. <clears throat> Helen had been writing to the school's director, Michael Nagos, without her knowledge. He had been publishing her letters. Helen was becoming known throughout the country, but she wasn't even aware of it. She enjoyed meeting other children at Perkins, and over the next few years, she was an unofficial student at the school. She was given access to a library of Braille books, and it was through this world of literature that she began to develop an awareness of human suffering. When Helen was 11, she wrote a story called The Frost King and sent it to Mr. Aganos. He was impressed, but soon it became clear that the story was similar to one published several years earlier. He accused Helen of plagiarism and had her questioned for two hours by a panel of judges. They eventually accepted that she had not intended to copy the story, which had been told to her when she was younger, but Helen was devastated. Soon after, she left the school. Her confidence was badly shaken, and for a while she was scared that her own thoughts and words might not be her own. 
So Anne encouraged her to write about her own life. Helen's article began, written wholly without help of any sort by a deaf and blind girl, 12 years old. Wow. Yeah, she was spunky, right? Yeah, man, yeah. yeah. During her teens, Helen continued her studies with Anne. She learned to lip read by placing her hand on the speaker's mouth and throat. And she also learned to speak. She went sailing in the summer and tobogganing in the winter. She loved to ride her horse and walk with her dogs. She met many well-known people, including the writer Mark Twain, who became a great friend and <coughs> supporter. It was as a teenager that Helen began developing her ideas about social justice. Anne had grown up in great poverty. She took Helen to visit New York's Lower East Side, a poor area where many new immigrants lived. Helen was deeply moved. She found it hard to understand how wealthy people could bear to live in their fine houses while others struggled to survive. At age 20, Helen began her university studies at Radcliffe College, becoming the first deaf-blind person to earn a university degree. Wow. Yeah, impressive, isn't it? She joined the Socialist Party, writing letters and articles and supporting the rights of workers and women and taking a stand against child labor. She supported the NAACP, that's short for National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And she fought for the rights of deaf, blind, and disabled people. She became a peace activist as well. Helen visited 35 countries. Can you imagine? Most of us can't manage that oh much, my much less goodness. than blind. Giving lectures and reaching the hearts and minds of countless people around the world. In 1964, at age 84, Helen Keller was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in recognition of her contributions to her wow. country. Wow. Yeah. So then if you want to visit these books, Kid Activists. Wow. We have them, and there's more information here. And then, wow. Who's our next one missing? Do you know? Do I you do know? not know. No. It's very exciting. Very popular person. Alexander, Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton. And I don't know anything about him. See, that's the great so, thing about these books. Yeah. We know his name. We, yeah. We, we right, know right, a lot right. of things about him, but we don't know his story. No, and you know, like mm -hmm. I knew uh, general about Helen Keller, but I didn't know, you know, like um, how then she became an activist not just for people who are differently abled, but also for people who are poor. I mean, she right. just blew it out of the water, she man. She did. Yeah, you know, I, wow. was, I was looking for a book to share not just her life, but the woman who helped her so much. Oh, my gosh. I know that. Yeah. Ann Sullivan. Ann Sullivan like, was like, She hero. must have been a brilliant, seriously. Well, she, and she was yeah. so calm and... Yeah. Uh, I, th I think that had a lot to do with it. Like the right person for the, the right, right students. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so look, we're getting so close to the end. Yeah, that's we've done a lot of people. We have. We've learned a yeah. lot of people. And I understand there's another set? There is the same kind of series, but it's like, um, it's like kids scientists. And like Ooh, kids, yeah. so it's kids, right, with right, right. Important ideas and important, yeah, yeah, experiences. And yeah, so right. that's awesome. Yeah. All right, Miss Jan. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And yeah, come on awesome. in. Check out some books about Helen Keller. And we would love to have you see us at the library because we miss you and we love you. There's one more. Yeah. yeah. Come on in. Bye, Miss Jan. Bye -bye. See you next time. Yeah, Bye. Have a good one.